Hello and welcome to the Delubal Tutorials. After looking at the general force, today's video will expand on this topic. The force vector sum in the form of single, line, surface, or solid loads is referred to as the resultant R. Typically, it is either added together or subtracted depending on the direction. However, it should run through parallel or identical action lines. If two forces are no longer parallel to each other, an intersection point should be added to their line of action. In this case, it's not possible to simply create their resultant with a vector sum. The first solution to this is to apply the graphical method or the so-called parallelogram of forces. The second solution is the analytical method. We will look at the first method in this video tutorial. We take wind load applied to a house as an example. The resultant from the wind negative pressure will be determined on the shaded portion of the house. The wind force from the left side creates suction on the right side of the house. The loads assumed include a 0.24 kN per meter distributed load with a length of 4.24 meters on the rafter and 0.25 kN per meter with a length of 4 meters on the wall. The resulting force's point of application for a constant distributed load is the geometry centroid or the center of the line load length. Notice F1 above and F2 on the right for this example. If we multiply the loads by their respective lengths, the resultants are each 1 kN. Afterwards, the system has two forces. Their action lines intersect and we can create the resultant at the point of intersection using the graphical method. For this example, we shift the forces through the action lines so that the parallelogram of forces can be modeled. F1 is now oriented 45 degrees from the horizontal. Notice force F2 has no inclination. We draw the parallel action line so that a parallelogram is formed. The diagonal of the parallelogram is now the resultant. The units are defined on top. One centimeter drawn here corresponds to an actual length of one meter as well as one kilonewton. Our forces are drawn to scale. Here you can see that F1 and F2 each have a length of 1 cm. If we now measure the resultant, the length is 1.85 cm. This is equal to 1.85 kN. The graphical option was implemented in the site plan. Alternatively, we can also use the force plan by keeping the directions of the two forces. The resultant begins at the first force start point and ends at the second force end point. The direction is then specified. This video explained how to create the resultant using the graphical method. In the next tutorial, we'll look at how the resultant is calculated analytically and how we can verify this in RFEM. 